Hey folks, uh, welcome back. Um, so I got this uh, Reno setter with my uh, E39 uh, M5 and my first initial reaction was like uh, why do we keep getting a uh, Reno setter in all of my BMWs? Uh, then I just got on up a little bit and uh, started my troubleshooting process only to find out uh, it wasn't as straightforward as it was in my other BMW, the 328i E92 version. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one being uh, the issue of this was happening very inconsistently, uh, meaning like it was happening only in uh, like once in every 200 or 300 miles. And the second one was uh, being the cost of the uh, Reynolds bolt here itself, which made a little nervous uh, to proceed with each uh, step of the troubleshooting process. Um, uh, so after the troubleshooting, uh, I just found out I was lucky enough that uh, the issue itself was confined to the Venus board and to the solenoid itself and not, uh, to, any, uh, not to do anything with the timing or with the Venus gear. Uh, the reason being is uh, the error I got, which is the P0022, the timing over a target, uh, simply states that the timing is kind of messed up and uh, Venus is just uh, one reason for it. Uh, anyway, uh, I was able to resolve this issue, so in this video, let's go about uh, on uh, how I was able to troubleshoot and uh, uh, resolve this issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try to remove the uh, Venus circuit board. So, uh, just to understand the layout, uh, this is a V8 with uh, two banks. This is bank one standing in front of the car, this is bank one, and this is bank two. And the cylinders one to four are in the bank one, and five to eight in the bank two. And the error code P0022 was in the bank 2, specifically on the intake side. So, this is bank 2, and, this, uh, and here is the vinyl circuit board that you need to remove. So, you have to just remove this uh, air intake. And uh, it will be easier if you can remove the uh, uh, water coolant hose, but uh, I'm not going to remove that. I'm just uh, trying to remove it without removing the water coolant. So, let's go and get started. Uh, let's start by removing the uh, mass R plus sensor. There are two clips. That's it. There is no clip at the bottom. Okay. There you go. I'll take all the clips. So there are five bolts, one, two, three, four. And there's one at the bottom. So you're going to use a hex bolt. So you use, you use to have extension. a towel underneath so that when you remove the you know, solenoid soil doesn't just splash all over the place. Okay. There's a small cover gasket. Just remove it. And this is going to be tricky. You have to just pry it off. The way I use is a flat head screwdriver. Put in the orientation. So the way it works is uh, these two solenoids, these two, these belong to the intake and these belong to the exhaust. So what I'm assuming is this solenoid seems to have gone bad or maybe it's working inconsistently. Let's go on and remove. So you have to just use a flat screwdriver, start from the bottom one. Yeah, never ever pull it from the boat. Always directly work with the solenoid. Okay. So the water out. Okay, so I managed to uh, pull out the solenoid boat uh, from the bank too. 
and uh, th these are uh, some diets I'll go over uh, in a little bit and uh, I try to get some rough representation on how it actually uh, uh, front view like how you see this uh, diet over here and uh, so these are the four solenoids and what I really see is uh, uh, the whole solenoid board is like divided into two sections so so this is the connecting wire so this goes for the intake side these two and these goes to the uh, exhaust side and again intake has two so what I understand from the documentation is uh, the whole uh, valve operation works by uh, controlling these two solenoids with the intake um, so if any, any one of these fails you might get different uh, error codes this stops failing or it, it works intermittently or there is a flaw or you, you actually get the uh, timing retarded and this one if it fails you get the timing over advanced uh, so, uh, so for me uh, for me, I'm consistently getting P022 so I believe this could be wrong so the, the idea of troubleshooting is uh, uh, to swap these and see if the error changes if not uh, it could be uh, something inside the venous uh, piston itself uh, which will be the next step if this doesn't work uh, then that will be the next step in the whole troubleshooting process here uh, you, as you can see like uh, this, is a, this is the these four locations are the diode which actually it's connected in parallel with the uh, solenoid and these are the uh, from the uh, front view the polarity is like positive negative positive that's how it's been assembled the solenoids so when you're actually working with the individual solenoid like uh, soldering and desoldering you have to uh, construct this and again uh, this is the diode so before you actually so uh, I'm, uh, this board is actually missing a couple of diodes the main reason we have diode is to uh, prevent a voltage spike uh, 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 going across the entire circuit and damaging a DME or anything or whatever it's like controlling the solenoid from the DME board so that is the only reason we have this diode for so if we can uh, go over here this is a schematic for the diode again we are talking about the conventional current flow not the electron flow itself so this is the anode this is the cathode and the current flow itself happens from the positive to negative on the convention when we talk about conventional current flow and this is the physical representation of the diode and uh, it should be usually a marking like a, a dark color in this case a black color which represents the cathode here this is the diode I purchased and to, for this purpose specifically it's the IN4148 diode again you can go through the uh, spec sheet to find more details about it but if you can see there is a black color on this side which is the negative side and this is the positive side so I'll be performing the diode repair as well while I'm trying to swap these two solenoids uh, when you actually uh, kind of like uh, repair the diodes or like uh, put a new of uh, any of these diodes just make sure uh, you align the polarity right uh, so in this case uh, the solenoid this is the positive this is the negative right so what you actually have to do is you have to considering this is the cathode side of the diode which is the uh, side which has the negative mark so that's the cathode so the cathode actually goes to the positive of the solenoid if you do it the other way you're technically short circuiting the uh, whole circuit uh, so just be very cautious uh, when you uh, uh, solder this okay so the first thing I'll be doing is I'll be uh, checking the resistance value uh, for each of the solenoid and the spec says it, it has to be within 4.5 ohm and I have this multimeter set at 200 ohm setting and let's go and check uh, each of the individual solenoid and let's make sure it's within 4.5 so this one is good This one is good as well. This one is good as well. This one is good as well. So all the four solenoids are at least good from the initial test. But as I said, I'm getting this issue intermittently. So there is really no other way other than swapping the solenoid and just take it for a test drive for 100 miles and testing it out. So I'm not very good at soldering, but I'll just try to do my best. Uh, so I'm using a desoldering bright to actually uh, remove some of the solder to release it from the slot. Okay, I just desoldered uh, and I'm going to swap it. 
let me just go ahead and do that. So I did finish the soldering and I did some air spray to clean all the debris. So I'll be going ahead and uh, uh, before that I'll be just doing a small test uh, by applying 9 voltage just to make sure the solenoid is open properly. Then I'll just go ahead and uh, install it back to the car. I'll go for a test drive. Let's see what I. The original portion of this noid was actually here, and it was creating over it. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, over it added uh, timing issue uh, once in a while for like once in every 200 or 300 miles it used to give. And uh, uh, so as of now, like uh, like 200 or 300 miles, I like swapped from uh, here to here. So right now I'm getting over uh, advanced timing issue. I kind of like uh, documented all the uh, error that I got uh, related to this Venus. So uh, uh, it, it is actually from top to bottom and the miles is actually the timeline over here. So the first time this Venus error happened was around 105 520 miles and it was the P0022 timing over retarder. Uh, so uh, the first time I was a little puzzled so I just cleared the error uh, memory to see uh, if it's going to happen again and it happened uh, exactly after uh, around uh, 260 miles and uh, so this time I again I want like double check so I clear the error so after around 140 miles I, I still got the error so this time I decided okay I'll just go ahead and swap the uh, solenoid uh, and uh, the actually actually the issue followed the solenoid here and this time it was around 110 miles so clearly you can see uh, the frequency was increasing, the error was happening more and more frequently as I keep putting more miles. And this is especially true uh, in case of any uh, sticky solenoid. Uh, most of the solenoids, if you look, uh, they don't fail immediately. They kind of like work intermittently and the frequency of issue increases and then finally it gives out. And that's clearly the issue here. And this actually, uh, uh, and the swap actually concluded that it is that solenoid which is uh, causing this issue. So, uh, so, I, uh, so at that point I, I decided to uh, go ahead with the, uh, uh, to purchase a new solenoid. Okay, I open the pack and there is the single noid. Okay. Yeah, these are super expensive. <laughs> this is not a new one. You will not uh, get a new one separately. So let me also test its resistance. Test it be between 4.5 and 4. Cool. So all I have to do is just transplant the o-rings from there. Uh, actually these have new o-rings so I'm just going to transplant it and also swap it in portion. So let's do some soldering. Okay. Okay so let me remove all the o-rings. There is also a holder ring. Because in this the inner one. So these two and the rings, these could actually turn uh, bad, but these are pretty good in my case. So I'm just going to reuse that. Let's start with bigger ring. Let me go ahead and install it. Let's put back the cover. So I'm going to use a torque app to read out the error memory. So before I start, I just want to show you what is that in the error memory. Okay. So as you can see, over advanced. So let me go and start the car. We'll run for five minutes and then clear the uh, error memory. It's going to make a lot of rattle noise at the starter because the oil was like drained from the Venus. It's blank now, so it's going to pump up all the Venus at the, as the initial charge. I'm going to clear the error memory. So after 
putting in the new park, I have put around like uh, 700 to 800 miles and I haven't received the error back. Not only that, um, I could also clearly see some increased torque output, uh, especially on the lower RPM range. Uh, so I could clearly conclude that uh, replacing it with a, a newer solenoid has actually worked. Um, and also like you won't be getting this uh, single solenoid as a new part, uh, either you have to search the internet uh, for, a rebuild, uh, for a good rebuild one or you have to purchase the entire boat. Uh, so um, before I conclude, I also want to just highlight one thing, uh, is, uh, it is like not only the prices of these cars are going up, but it's also important to note that uh, the amount of time and cost involved to resolve any of these issues are also going up. So what I'm actually trying to do here is uh, kind of like a self-learning and document it so that it will be uh, useful for both myself and to all the other E39 uh, owners over there. So if you see any uh, deviation uh, in this or if you want to add any of your valuable feedback, uh, feel free to uh, just input those in the comment section below. And uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching this guys and have a nice day. Bye.